What's up guys, Big Papa Truck back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are guys, sending you good vibes, sending you love as always. I'm having a wonderful day. It's very hot down here in Florida where I live. Uh, so other than that, I'm sweating a lot, but it's been a great day for me so far and I hope you can say the same. And I hope you'll say the same after you watch this video because we've got a cool, cool video for you today. We're doing a how to build Harima showcase guys. So if you were lucky enough to pull Harima in the last couple of 10 X's and you've been wondering, how do I build Harima for the live arena? How do I maximize her power drop? Well, today I'm gonna make sure that you know exactly what to do. And I'm gonna show off my plus two fully awakened beast of a Harima. When I tell you that she is a hard carry in live arena, guys, I am not exaggerating. She is probably my most overall, like most picked overall champion. So I'm really excited to get to share with you how I build her and how I think you can build her to maximize your success. But before that, let's introduce today's sponsor for the video, which is Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. Guys, if you haven't checked out Bloodline, you gotta do it right now. This is an awesome dark fantasy RPG game with some of the most unique gotcha gameplay that you're gonna see in the space. The cool thing is you get to try it for free using my link down below in the description or by scanning the QR code right here on the screen. One of the big things with it is that you can actually create create and breed your characters to make all new, super interesting hybrids. And there's over a thousand combinations in the entire game, which is completely bonkers. They just released a new faction, which looks super, super sick. So check out these nine tailed Vulpins right here, right? They come from an Eastern land of mysterious and deadly power. And they're the masters of illusion and spiritual magic, misdirecting their enemies and draining them of their life force. And I gotta say, they look pretty freaking sweet. They've got awesome graphics. Graphics. They've got cool storylines going on. There's just a lot to like here and it's worth giving it a check out. Cool things that I love is the fact that you got rewarding late game PVP. So it isn't just PVE stuff. They've even got seasonal guild wars going on as well as the opportunity to breed more champions with your waifus and create entirely new bloodlines and raise your own kingdom and build an entire economy. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here. So all you gotta do right now is scan that QR code or download the game with my link down below in the description. It's entirely free for you. And again, you get a $20 starter pack, which includes one summoning crystal, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds just for signing up using my link. But wait, there's more. The first 30 people to use my link and leave their account ID and username below my pinned comment will actually get this legendary champion, this absolutely awesome Fox lady completely for free. And by the way, she's one of the best support and CC units in the entire game. All yours for free if you leave your account ID and username below the pinned comment. So check it out, guys. Let me know what you think. If you like seeing more content like this, maybe we'll do some videos on it as well. But now back to Harima. Okay, let's talk about Harima, man. She is just so freaking awesome, right? And if you have her, you've probably used her in live arena because she is a monster. So let's get into how I build her and why you need to make sure you're building her as well uh, for your live arena battles. And she's also, by the way, still useful in classic arena. This is my Harima plus two fully awakened absolute monster. You'll see that I have Savage on her as well as Divine Speed. I would recommend building her in Savage or Lethal because she hits like a freaking truck uh, and you wanna do as much damage as possible. Now, if you're building her for Classic Arena, this build absolutely will work, but you can also consider building her as kind of like a tank, a tank unit to help keep your champions alive. And the reason for that is because of her very unique skills and especially her unique passive. So let's go into that first. We've got the A1 attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack, books up to 75%, a 75% chance debuff for two turns, also has a 25% chance of placing a 50% decrease debuff, attack debuff on all enemies for two turns if this attack is critical. What a sick A1, right? So she, right there, she has the ability to lower the opponent's damage against you, which is great for Rodos, great for uh, you know any kind of attack-based champion. The biggest thing with this ability is if you're in higher level arena, you just have to be careful because if you apply that decrease attack debuff on Sifi, who usually has Polymorph or Duchess or any of the other champions that have Polymorph, it's very easy for her to get sheeped, which you don't want. So you don't want to build her necessarily with a ton of accuracy for the meta right now, but if you can stick this debuff on their attacker, it's a really nice thing to come out of the A1. 
The A2 is disgusting, all right? You're attacking one enemy three times. This is a Rotos killer, baby, right there. Three times, gets right through his passive. Each hit decreases the target's defense by 5%. By the way, no accuracy required for that. You're gonna decrease their defense no matter what. It stacks up to 30%. And then each hit also increases this champion's defense by 5%, stacking up to 100%. So you can hypothetically get her defense to double whatever it is over the course of a battle. So she hits harder and harder and harder as the battle drags on. And if you can keep her alive, I mean, she is a legitimate unit. But one of the coolest things about this skill and how I tend to use it in a, in a live arena is if you manage to kill someone, it instantly activates her A3. And that is an AOE, just sick looking dragon attack that also provokes. So let's take a look at that now quickly. So here's the AOE attacks all enemies, places a provoke debuff for one turn. This debuff cannot be blocked or resisted if the target champion is from the demon spawn faction. Guys, that is huge. Think about how many demon spawn Legos are in the meta still. Duchess, Prince Kaimar is still up in there. Uh, more to Macabre. You know, you're placing that, de that provoke debuff no matter what, unless they have stone skin. So the interesting thing about this is it says that can't be blocked or resisted but if they have stone skin, you will not get this debuff to go through that. I don't know if they need to change the wording. It's a little kind of ambiguous to me. If something can't be blocked or resisted, it should go through stone skin. But as it stands right now, it will not go through stone skin. But if they have blocked debuffs up, but no stone skin, yeah, you're gonna CC them. Again, subject to getting sheep. You gotta be careful of that. And then finally, this is probably one of the best things about Harima overall, her passive is broken folks it is absolutely disgusting enemy ignore defense effects are decreased by 50 percent champions from the demon spawn faction cannot inflict critical hits on this champion this champion cannot land weak hits on champions from the demon spawn faction she's legitimately the demon hunter i mean this is this is such a massive passive because it lets you keep your team alive so much longer and why you'll see her in classic arena teams where she's built just like a tank, right? With a huge like HP pool, maybe a, a bolster set or stone skin usually to try to keep her alive longer and keep your other champions alive longer because of that passive. And you think about champions like Rodos, you think about Baron, like there are so many champions in the game that rely on massive, de you know, ignore defense effects, even more to Macabre. And he can't even, you know, he can't even crit her because, because he's a demon spawn champion. But she's such a hard counter for this for these types of champions. And in live arena especially, she really is the Rodos killer. It makes it so much harder for Rodos on a team when you see a Harima, right? Because his A3 doesn't have an amazing multiplier. It really relies on completely ignoring defense or getting close to it. And this skill massively negates that. So she is just a unit, folks. As I said before, Fully awakened, my copy, plus two. So she's not plus four quite yet, uh, but she's pretty darn strong. Let's talk about how I build her. Let's look at the actual pieces here. So I've got her in Savage. I've got her in Divine Speed. Uh, that's because I need her to go fast. I need her to be pretty fast in the live arena. Um, if we look at the pieces here, this is one of the best pieces I have in the entire game, by the way. Quad crit rate, just a disgusting piece overall. Then we've got crit rate, crit damage, HP percentage, defense percentage. It also ascended defense for the helmet, another phenomenal piece. Um, you'll see that I don't have her fully, you know, uh, glyphed out. There's actually a lot more room for this champion to grow in strength on my account once I can get the glyphs. Um, I do need to fully ascend this piece, which also hit defense. Crit damage, speed, I mean, crit rate. HP is good. You want her to have as high HP as possible, but mainly as high of a defense as possible and as high of a crit damage as possible. And again, high speed. For live arena, speed matters. The faster your nukers are, typically the easier you're going to you have your fights because keep in mind, if she gets sheeped, if she's faster, she's gonna get out of that sheep buff, um, you know, than, faster than she normally would. And that also, you're just getting more turns. We all know how I feel about speed in live arena. If we look at the gloves here, crit damage, defense percentage. These gloves are just okay. They could be a lot better. Again, so many things on her right now are not fully glyphed. Like you can see, there's a there's really an opportunity for me to buff her speed up a lot more than it already is. Um, this is a pretty solid chest piece though. Wish this had come up defense percentage. Then it would have been perfect. And then check out these boots, folks. Oh, oh. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. How nice are these boots? 
This is about as close to perfect as you can get for a set of boots. Defense percentage boots, defense percentage uh, roll, triple crit damage, crit rate, speed, and HP. For her, this is, this is pretty much a perfect boot. I love these boots very much. Um, so we take a look at her accessories. I've got her in double reaction. I used to have her in triple reaction, but I went down to double only because I needed to up her HP a little bit more. And because I'm building her faster, chances are she's probably gonna take a turn before the enemy um, attacker does, unless it's a Taurus or a very fast Rotos, right? If you're building Taurus or Rotos, you're probably building them pretty fast. And again, I need to glyph her up a lot more to get her speed up further than it is right now. But I wanted more HP, so we'll get to that piece in a second. So we've got reaction, banner, defense, HP, speed, nice rolls here. Reaction, banner, crit damage. This one didn't roll anything super great, but there is HP on there. And again, reaction's great. And then this is a pretty sick ring. It's a defense ring with a quad HP roll. Um, I had this I had this on her previously, which is another reaction ring. I don't know if you can see it, um, which if you see there, would have upped her defense by 108, but it would have lowered her HP by 5,000. And I decided to take it off and just see how it works with a little bit more HP. So total stats, what are we looking at? 49k HP, 7,400 defense, 213 speed. Again, I could get that up to 240 with glyphs pretty easily. Um, and that's about where you wanna be if you can get her that fast. 230, 240, somewhere in that neighborhood to get those attacks in on Rotos, to get those attacks in on Taurus. Um, just a huge, huge, huge help when you have that kind of speed in there. 293% crit damage, 100% crit rate, of course, and very low accuracy, which is actually awesome because it makes it much less likely for her to get sheeped by the Seafies and the Duchesses. And again, typically people are not running Polymorph all the time on their damage dealers. Usually they're running Soul Reap or Lightning Cage or Ward of the Fallen. They're usually not gonna run Polymorph. So you can, you can hypothetically apply that decreased attack debuff on their nuker without necessarily getting sheep which is awesome so i love this build i think it's a really solid build um doing some work in the in the arena we'll take a quick look at her masteries um i don't have anything super awesome on her i probably need to change a couple of these because they're not really meta anymore which is specifically uh opportunist and um uh, stoked to fury uh, really like more likely you probably want to go with cycle of violence because you could actually get a chance to lower that cooldown on her a2 there or even her a3 um, and then also possibly roll one of death um, depending on how you feel ruthless ambush though is pretty good you, you get the increased damage so i'd probably go with just cycle of violence over uh opportunist and then maybe go with a double double counter attack the debuff or the uh, master you're seeing down here is just helm smasher um, pretty standard for any nuker and then also kill streak to increase her damage whenever she kills someone in the arena. So we're gonna do a quick showcase how much time we have left on the live arena. I, I kind of hate that the live arena has such limited times. Does anybody else have that kind of problem where it's so limited that you don't get as many battles in as you want? So we got 29 minutes in here. I'm gonna do, just to show you, we're in Plat Arena. I'm gonna do one battle with her in Plat Arena um, to show you that she's still, still useful. Here you go, you can see her in there right there. Again, with this build is more geared specifically towards uh towards a you know live arena type feel but she is still very much viable in platinum arena as well uh let's go with Sifi. let's go with where is she where is my girl harima come to daddy and for this they got an uko what can i not drag this <laughs> do i know how to play raid after all this time maybe not um we could go you know what we go with Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw an Uko in here too. Why not? You know what? I don't usually use Uko, but why not throw an Uko in here? See how it goes. Yeah, I can work with this. Let's give this a shot. Let's see how this goes. So we'll do one classic arena battle just to get a feel for her. And then right into live arena we go. All right. Shut them all down. Hopefully don't get sheeped. Don't get sheeped. We didn't get sheeped. You love to see it. Go to sleep. Now they might have reaction here, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just... Pop off with the A2. Didn't get quite enough damage on the Yuko. Got to get through that shield first. So something to keep in mind is her abilities don't go through shields, um, which obviously is pretty sick nowadays, and there's quite a few champions who do. Uh, we got sheeped on the Yuko, and here comes the Rodos. But again, the nice thing is she's a pretty solid counter uh, to Rodos in general because, again, of her passive. We'll go ahead and hit him with the AoE. 
and now she's polymorphed. Everything is going wrong. God, I hate polymorph in this game. Why is it in the game still? Is it is it just me or is it the worst uh, thing of all time? It, yeah, and we hexed this one, unfortunately, which is not great. But luckily we got that and he got woken up. All right, we're still okay. We're still okay. Their shield is gone. Now we just gotta hope that the sheeps, uh, nope, we got very unlucky. They're still sheeps. <sighs> Polymorph truly is, I think, the worst feature in this entire game. It's, it's pretty difficult to put into words how disgusted I am, how depressed I am. God, please remove it. Please remove it, Raid. No one likes it. Does anybody like it? I know you guys don't like it. I can't be the only one. Someone else has to despise Polymorph as much as I do. This is now becoming a much harder battle than it should have been, but at least our Uko is stunning and uh, doing what he's supposed to do. And now we're getting stunned as well. We're having a lot of fun here. <laughs> These champions are built super tanky. Now you'll notice she can crit on the Duchess, right? So even though there's an affinity difference there, she can't land weak hits on demon spawn champions, which is pretty sick because it allows her, I don't know why I tried that because there's a uh, block debuffs up, but it allows her to essentially uh, crit. I can't kill this Duchess, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this to get her defense up, get the, the Duchess's defense is down. All right, there we go. All right, Uko's doing some work now. We're coming back. Please don't get sheeped. We didn't get sheeped. It's all happening, folks. Oh, that's not good. Every, this is just a, a nightmare. D this, is, this is what we call uh, an absolute nightmare. Kill the Rotos, please. Yes, now pop off the AoE. There we go. Now we're back to doing what we need to do. And maybe we get a stun. No stuns, just get more sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. Sheepity, sheep, sheep. Every day, sheep and sheepy sheep. God, I hate sheep. All right, this should hopefully finish him off. Almost. We can put it on auto now. Take down the Pythion. This took way longer than it should have. Uh, but you know what? We came out with a win. So there you go. It's still a win, which I will take, assuming we can actually get a turn off here. See if he should put him to sleep. Nice. Okay, there we go. We did it. And it only took three minutes, guys. What a fast battle. Uh, that's terrible for Platinum Marina, by the way. That is not good. She's not, you know, to be honest with you, she's not a character you'd use a ton on offense typically in Platinum Arena. I would say she's better on defense, again, because of her passive. Um, you can just do, you do more with it there. But she she could still be used. She's not horrible. She's just not meta for, for Platinum Arena offense. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into Live Arena. Let's hope she doesn't get banned. Let's see what she's got here. Pick pick some teams, see what we got. You can notice from my last live arena video, we are much higher up the food chain now. We're 1,856 points. So I did a lot of games off stream. Obviously we've lost now, the streak is over. Uh, so what we pick doesn't matter as much. I've been going with mostly meta champs, frankly, at this level of live arena. So Sifi, Harima, Marichka, Taurus. Um, we're gonna throw Marichka and Taurus in there and hope that they ban our Taurus or ban our Marichka. Um, okay. <laughs> Showcase is going really well, going really well so far. Uh, he already left the battle. You know, he, the, the, I don't know if it was the Harima that intimidated him. It was probably the Marichka and Taurus, given that he immediately left after the Marichka and Taurus came out. Uh, you know, but we're going to, we're, I'm going to showcase Harima guys. Just stick with me. Stick with me guys. We're showcasing Harima. All right. <laughs> oh man. This, this. We're gonna get there. You're gonna see, and she's gonna she's gonna do so much work. You're gonna be like, oh my god, Drock, she's so good. I need one. Thank you for showing me how to build her because I already have one. Wow, I love Harima. Like I, I'm I am in love with Harima, and I am I am in love with Harima, and I am not afraid to say it. I love Harima uh, because she, like I said, she goes on almost every single team that I pick. Because she's such a hard counter to so many champions with the ignore defense, and she can do a ton of damage. And again, mine's not even maxed out. I need to get her faster. Okay, we got a really nice team going on here. We got a Marichka, we got a Taurus, we got a Uko. This should be a good fight. Let's see who they ban. Let's hope they ban the Taurus so we can show off the Harima, see if we can get a W. Polymorph on two of their champions. 
Uh, thank you, by the way, to those of you who reminded me that info does show you in the actual battle uh, if there is polymorph or not. I literally completely forgot. Uh, just goes to show you that even though I played the game for two years, sometimes you forget things and you need to remember what they are, right? Who do I want to ban here? I'm going to ban... I'm going to ban their Taurus. They ban my Marichka. Awesome. So we'll get to showcase what we're doing here. I don't want to increase my accuracy too much, but I do want to lead with Harima because she has that polymorph and that makes it more likely for her to sheep the Uko. So we're going to lead with Harima, even though it ups our resistance. Her resistance isn't high enough that her uh, that their Uko should be a problem. And again, hopefully we're faster um, so that we can just go ahead and shut their skills down right away. That decreased attack doesn't mean anything to these champions that Uko puts out on his A1. Because again, Harima is defense-based and Taurus is HP-based. So it's less of a problem uh, than it would normally be. Okay, what are we going to do here? Um, do I risk? Do I risk it? I'm going to risk it. See if he has reaction. He didn't. Awesome. Good start. Taurus. Hey, he's still really good, guys. This isn't meant to be a Taurus showcase, but, you know, he's, he's still probably the best nuker out there. Uh, let's sleep the Rodos probably faster than my Harima at this point. But we should be able to take him down here with our A2. Uh, oh, you know, I just realized that Uko actually stole my buff. Oh my God, we didn't get him down. Oh, that is so frustrating. But again, he's been locked out. He has none of his abilities. So not a big deal. Just get him down there. Hit him with the with the Taurus, and now we can put this back up without having the decreased defense get stolen. I didn't even realize that Uko stole that, um, which obviously makes Harima hit less hard. So she would have definitely killed that Rodos had she had that buff. Um, okay, so here we have a ton of buffs. I don't think I can kill this Marichka, and this isn't going to... I'm going to go ahead and use it. This isn't going to kill the Duchess, or uh, D, or I should say... Um, Put a provoke on the Duchess because obviously the stone skin is up, but I just want to make sure we try to take this this uh, Marichka out sooner rather than later. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the Marichka one more time. Almost dead. Do I don't have an AOE here? Do I want to wait? You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I don't care. See if we can just get the Marichka killed. Ah, this is really rough because I might get sheeped here. No, we didn't. Okay, back comes the Uko. Can we kill the Uko? Yes, killed the Yuko. Awesome. Rodos might have his A2. Yep. Didn't kill uh, our Yumiko, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and try to sleep the Duchess. Let's just A1 the Rodos. Rinse and repeat. And is Harima going to be the one to take her down? Let's find out. Not quite, but still really good damage, and we made the opponent leave. We'll take it. Let's go again. I've lost, I think, five or six times now. Five or six times now, one of which was to me getting disconnected entirely, uh, which was very frustrating because I literally was about to win the entire game, and then it disconnected me, and that, that uh, you know, it happens, guys, right? It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but I'm enjoying Live Arena, and I hope you are as well. Obviously, this mode is definitely geared toward high-spending, end-game whale players as it stands right now. I do think that that will improve over time. Um, I think it's one of those things where right now it's just really set up for people like me who spend a ton of money on the game. But I think that there are ways for them to really make it more engaging. I think I'm going to do a video on how to improve Live Arena as a whole, what they can do to make it much more enjoyable for the average player, for the free to player, um, and just something that can really take Raid to the next level. Um, speaking of taking Raid to the next level, did you guys watch the Call of the Arbiter episode? I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was solid. You know, it was a little short, um, but the animation wasn't bad. The storyline I thought was pretty cool. Voice acting was solid. Um, as a former voice actor myself, I feel qualified to judge that. So overall, not, not bad whatsoever. Okay, who do we want to block here? Uh, George is kind of nasty, but you know, it's got to be Taurus. Got to ban the Taurus. He banned our Yumiko. So again, our Harima makes it in. I've had almost a, a, a change of heart on who to ban when you see certain teams. 
And part of me, I've always said, if you watch my previous live arena videos, always ban lockout, right? Always ban lockout, always ban lockout, always ban lockout. I still think that's mostly true, but sometimes I think you might be better off banning the Sifi. Um, I, I don't know. Like I've had a couple fights where the guy Sifi just absolutely carried the team and he banned my Sifi and even with lockout, he was able to win. So, okay, here we go. We, we polymorph right there. This is all right. This is a bug that has to get fixed. <clears throat> it, Plarium, if you're watching this, this shouldn't happen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he shouldn't get two. Tara should not get two. Oh God, I gotta, I gotta go. Uh, nuke, wee! All right, we killed the Georgian. <laughs> so we got the bug, obviously, where the Uko's dead, uh, but doesn't look like they're dead. I'm not gonna waste the A2. I'm just gonna hit him with the A1. Um, I don't care about increasing defense. I'd rather that's around soon because we want to kill these, kill these guys ASAP. Go ahead and do that. Let's do this. But so that's that's a bug, right? Where Taurus hits twice with his counterattacking A2. Can somebody explain to me why that's happening? Because I don't think it's supposed to. They hit once when you're a sheep, and then once again when you are not a sheep, and I, I just don't think that's right. Right, am I crazy? I, I feel like that's not supposed to happen. And yet, it seems to happen every single time that Taurus attacks a sheep. So if somebody can please tell me in the comments down below if I'm crazy, um, it seems like that's not supposed to happen and it has been happening every single game. So Plarium, if you're watching this, please give me an answer or somebody tell me if I'm crazy. Hit him with the A2 of the Taurus. Oh man, we just obliterated it. I mean, this is supposed to be a Harima showcase. So maybe I'll pick a different character other than Taurus, frankly, but I just don't wanna have, the reason why I'm picking Taurus and we won again, the reason why I'm picking Taurus is I don't want Harima to be banned. And I feel like if I don't pick Taurus, there's a pretty good chance that Harima will be banned. But let's let's try to pick a champion other than Taurus. We'll pick Leorius and see uh, if maybe we can get one showcase where, where our other nuker gets banned and it's just Harima. And we get the full power. I had to burp there, sorry. We get the full power of Harima. Um, so hopefully that will happen here. And again, we're facing harder teams than we were in the past. Obviously we're higher up the leaderboard. Um, you know, I think I can get to, to level 2000 in the next couple of days. I am gonna be live streaming raids soon, guys. So please, if you haven't already subbed to the YouTube and you like this content and you wanna see me stream live, um, I'm gonna be doing that soon. I already stream live on Twitch, but it's mostly Warzone content there and other FPS games like Apex Legends. So I'm a big FPS gamer, if you didn't know, um, but I will be doing uh, raid specific content on on uh, on YouTube. Uh, who do I want to use here? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with. I'm gonna try something different. Instead of the Marichka, do we go like completely off meta? Yeah, you know what? Why not? Let's do Uko and let's do uh, Leorius there. So we'll do something a little different. And then we'll do uh, our lockout and see who he picks. He'll probably pitch, pick Marichka here and see if we can win this. Oh, you went with, uh, yeah, very similar, okay. Uh, I'm gonna ban the, I'm gonna ban, who's he gonna ban? How fast am I compared to him probably? Probably not faster with, I'm gonna, you know what? I might regret this. I'm gonna ban his Duchess only cause I wanna like just pop off with the uh, with the Uko without having worrying about like any type of sheep. And that was the only character that was sheep. I think I'll be faster than his Arbiter given my Seafy's plus four and fully awakened. But this is not speed tuned. My, um, my Uko is not speed tuned to go second. So he might cut in here. He did, sure enough, he cut in. I'm not surprised by that. All right, let's see if we can, oh, he's got a stone skin Tars. That's very strange. Very strange indeed. All right, we sheeped. We sheeped his Uko. All right, we killed he, We killed his uh, Leorius. Our Leorius is set to absolutely annihilate. I don't, like. I wanna showcase the Harima, and actually the Harima is faster. Look at that, we survived the nuke, and that is entirely, oh, interesting. My, my Leorius went first. Um, I'm not going to, this might end up getting me killed, but I want to showcase the Harima, so I'm just going to kill this, and then we're going to go ahead and pop off with the A2 here and see if that 
if that kills everybody else, which it didn't. So I, I might die for this, but you know, showcase forever. Hey, look, she survived. Let's go ahead and see if we can sleep with Taurus. Why didn't I just res? Clearly I'm not paying attention. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll just finish it off. Screw it, just finish. The showcase is going great, guys. <laughs> Harima, she's amazing. All right, let's talk about that battle right there. So obviously Leorius, I think, did most of the damage. Actually, no, Harima did more damage, but Leorius had the kills. So even in that battle right there, right, where I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing and did a lot of dumb things and still won, uh, because in that battle, my champions are just stronger, let's be honest. And I got away with idiotic decisions because I'm not thinking, because I'm talking while I'm doing stuff. Um, one of the nice things there, you could see it, is Harima kept my team alive. We just survived a massive Taurus nuke, and there's no way that we survived that without Harima. No way. Like, I guarantee you, see if he dies there. I guarantee you the other people die there because that 50% helps negate that Savage on that Taurus and potential Helm Smasher proc. Um, so without, without that, like, we're dead. We're dead there. So even when you make idiotic decisions, Harima can really cover a lot of your mistakes. All right, one more battle for the road. One more exciting one. We'll do, we'll do a different comp. We'll do something completely different. Um, what do I want to do? You know what? I'll do, I'll do something I haven't done yet, which is bust out my Duchess. How about that? You guys want to see a little Duchess action? We'll leave with Sifi again, because I love Sifi, and she's really big for empowering our Harima with that increased defense. But we'll roll with Duchess, and we'll roll with... Harima second. Now we'll go with our Duchess. Where is she? Plus four Duchess action. Not fully awakened though. Sad. Very sad. You know, what kind of whale doesn't have a fully awakened Duchess, guys? I mean, can I really call myself a Kraken if it's not plus four fully awakened? I failed you. It is so hard to level up like the fully awakened champions though on that last level. Like it's almost not even worth it, frankly, except for certain certain characters. Like I'm saving up for Yumiko to fully awaken her because I want that plus 10 speed buff. That's big. That's really big for that champion. For Duchess, having an extra 5% chance of polymorph, like, yeah, that's really nice. But having plus 10 speed isn't necessarily a good thing, depending on what type of Duchess you're trying to build, if you're trying to build a stall one. Um, this one's built a little bit faster, so we'll see. Uko, Harima. See, everybody loves Harima. Everybody loves Harima. That should be the title of a new TV show. Um, we're going to go with... We'll go with Leorius again. Leorius, great champion to use against Uko because he can't be CC'd. Um, and if you have like any type of... You know, as long as he doesn't end up with uh, block buffs on him, then he can't be... Uh, his Swift Berry can't be prevented from proccing. So let's see who he bans. As it stands right now, I would probably ban his Uko or maybe his Necrit. Um, he's got a lot of Polymorph on his team, as we can see right there. So I'm definitely going to have to be aware of that if the Harima gets banned here. Um, I'll, leave this, I'll leave this in regardless of who gets picked. Um, you know, I mean, he'll probably I'm trying to think of who I want out. You know, I'm going to go ahead and ban the Uko. Yeah, so he banned the Harima, so that's a bummer for the showcase, but we'll just play this out because why not? We'll play this out, see how it goes. I've actually never used Duchess in live arena, um, so I'm curious to see how this goes. It could be a win, could be a loss. He, see, that's the thing about like putting the Harima in there. It forces people, if they have Rodos, typically to ban her because Rodos' A3 is essentially worthless versus Harima teams. And again, that's why she's so you know, useful from that perspective, right? Uh, da, 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 put you to sleep. I am, I think if I want to use the A, the A2 here, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to use the A1. So they had a little bit, you saw there, there was only one critical hit. So there is reaction in play. Uh, the nice thing is my Yumiko did Keep all these guys down. Let's do that. Hit for a little decreased turn meter. Here comes their Harima. Not going to do anything. Yeah, through the stone skin. That's good. All right, speed him up again. Really would like his Rotos to take a turn here. Good, awesome. That's great. Let's try and slow down this Harima. 
and good the necker's taking a turn as well that's awesome that's what we want necker's got the decreased defense this is you know this is i don't want to say risky for me to use the a3 i might try to use leorius's a3 here could could sheep me because necker's de necker does have polymorph and look at me using this yep polymorph on both the necker and the duchess and the harima but harima's got block buffs up and duchess is in stone skin uh that's right decreased defense again two turns there interesting let's just try it now technically for rotos you want to you want to kind of use the uh the a2 of leorius to get that double hit but i didn't think i could kill him and also he didn't have polymorph and on top of that i was able to land the true fear which means he has a chance of not getting his turn which he didn't all right what do we got here not really a harima showcase but hey free live arena content right who doesn't love live arena content Keep putting the Rotos to sleep. I would love, that's what I was looking for with the Duchess. And can I, can I get some kills here? Let's find out. Yes, we got some kills. Go to sleep. We didn't get sheeped. You love to see it. And now you're on cooldown. And hey, the Duchess is working out. The fast Duchess isn't bad, right? We got our Leorius uh, stuff back. So look at that. Drak can win with more than just meta champions, guys. You saw it here first. To be fair, my champions are really strong. So we you know this is not a massive accomplishment. But hey, this is another Platinum Arena player. You know, probably not a Kraken like me. But I'm sure someone who spent a decent amount of money. So you saw there, we weren't able to kill with the Leorius. Part of that's because we were pretty high health. And then also again, Harima. So even though I'm not showcasing my Harima, you're at least getting to see their Harima, who is currently keeping their team alive in spite of my nukes. Just gonna risk it, put her to sleep, hit the Duchess. Let's get out of here, come on. Leorius, unleash nuke. Nice, there you go, guys. So look, I hope that that was helpful for you um, in terms of what you can do with Harima. Obviously, I'm going to be doing more live arena content as we go along. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's just a just a fun thing to see how high level accounts do stuff. And the reality is, like, if you look at the leaderboard, I'm still not at the top 100. I haven't played a ton of live arena still. So let's actually quick, take a quick peek here. Just give you this. We're sitting at 97% win rate currently, 210 battles fought. Again, I think I'm 210 or I'm 194 and or no, 100, 204 and six. I can do math. I'm good at math. Um, so yeah, not bad. Top 500 as it stands right now, but we can definitely get to top 100 with this account. And that's our next goal, right? We're going to push towards top 100. I'm going to do some more live arena content. We're going to do it live on the stream. So again, if you like this kind of stuff, consider subbing to the YouTube. Uh, Big thank you again to our sponsor, Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. And uh, just a huge thank you to you guys for all the support and kind words. Let me know what you thought of this video down below in the contents. I hope that it helps you when it comes to building your Harima. I hope that you do awesome battles in Classic Arena and in Live Arena. And uh, yeah, just, just want to say thank you again for, for showing up, for watching the video and for bringing all the positivity in the comments down below. I am Big Papa Drock. It's been a pleasure serving you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you in a video soon. Big Papa Drock, out.